Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you our hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson to us today comes to us from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them, and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not feign to grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings, like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. Here ends the lesson. Our response to the lesson this morning comes to us from Psalm 147. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to God! How pleasant it is to honor Him with praise! The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving and make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve humankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. 
he has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Hallelujah. The second lesson today is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting. For an obligation is laid upon me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them over. To the Jews I became a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law, and to those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel so that I may share in its blessings. Here ends the lesson. now the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. Now that evening at sundown they brought him to all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. 
And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. And he answered, Then let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And he went throughout all of Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Everyone is searching for you. That's what Peter says when he finds Jesus. Today, if you would go searching for someone, you probably wouldn't be walking all over the neighborhood looking for them, but rather you would go to your Google machine, as it were. You'd get your computer out and you'd do a search. If it were so easy to search for God in that way, to put in the word God or whatever name that we use for God and see what comes up and then start picking through all of the different choices to figure out which one is the God we are looking for. Yeah, that's even the way we do it without the Google machine. We look around and we see different things, and we choose the God that we are looking for, the God that we want to worship. And so the question becomes, when might we light on a false God in our search? As we click on one of the options on our Google page, perhaps one of the options is a false god. Perhaps it's a bot, as we have come to understand it. Sort of robo-person who then takes you on a meandering trip through the internet until they get you where they want you. And they either accost you with an ad or some sort of sales pitch, or perhaps they even infiltrate your computer and do all kinds of damage. It's not such a bad metaphor, really, because that's what false gods do. That's what demons do, is they lead us away from God. They lead us on some sort of journey that where we don't want to go, really, but we're always thinking that around the next corner there may be that for which we search. And so we stay with them. And then suddenly they catch us up. Either they try to sell us something, something we didn't really intend to be with, or perhaps they infiltrate our computer and mess things up terribly. Yes, demons can do that. They can lead us astray, or they can get into our lives, and they can mess us up completely. It's interesting when, in the computer world, something grabs onto our computer, often it is called ransomware, where you get this idea that you have to call somebody and you have to pay them a large sum of money just to get what you held precious and locked up in your computer's memory, because they've been able to infiltrate it and separate you from it. Demons can do that. Uh, we might call them bots, or we might call them gremlins in our little machines, but they're really, in some sense, demons. Their power is beyond our control that often will lead us astray or mess us up. That's why in the Gospel lesson, 
Jesus talks about casting out demons. He went through all of Galilee and he taught in their synagogues and he cast out the demons. What Jesus was doing was trying to make things right. Trying to make things whole again. In our search for God, is that what we really want? Are we really looking for someone to come to heal us, to raise us up? As Simon's mother-in-law was healed and raised up. Or are we rather looking for somebody who's just going to kind of take care of our problems? Are we looking for somebody genuinely to heal us? So that we know really that they are God. Because what we really know, where we really find God, is not in a Google machine somewhere. But rather in prayer. When we lift our minds and hearts to God. And we listen to that still small voice deep down within. And even then we're not too sure what's going on. Until we begin to look outside of ourselves. And then we move into service. These are the two things where we can test what we have seen in our search to see if it's real. If it leads us to prayer, if it leads us to a conversation with God, a conversation that is actually freeing, even though the conversation may be awkward or difficult. And when that conversation is ended, that we are raised up to serve others. That our attention is turned away from ourselves to others. There are some people who interpret this particular gospel passage in a very negative way. That somehow Jesus is being a bit selfish. He saw that Simon's mother-in-law, whose home they were in, was ill and Obviously, being in their home, she couldn't take care of them if she was not feeling well, if she had a great fever. So he heals her so that she can get up and wait on them to make them supper. That is kind of a selfish thing to do. But I think there's more to that than that. Because the word that is used is she served them. Not in some sort of way where she was, had less dignity than they. But to begin to realize that it is in serving one another that we find our greatest truth. It is in serving one another that we find often the answer to our searches. It is in serving one another where we often can find the very face of God. That is, after all, what we are asked to do when we renew our baptismal covenant, our baptismal promises, that we would seek to see the face of Christ in all persons. And if we would serve Christ, if our words are true, then indeed that's what we must do with one another. That we just don't pay lip service to it and say, well, when I see Christ, I will serve him but rather that each one of us bears the image of God, the image of Christ in our souls. And it is there that we begin to serve one another. And in so serving, we find that for which we search. So there are the two things in today's Gospel lesson. Prayer, Jesus himself went off by, by himself to pray in a secluded place. And when people were searching for him, he realized that he was sent to serve as well. If Jesus can serve, how can we do any less? So even as we look at ourselves, whether it's because of the weather and we feel put upon by the snowstorm or the inability to do what we want to do because it's not very comfortable outside or we can't get from one place to another. Or even this horrible pandemic in which we find ourselves where we have to mask up and we have to make sure that we keep our distance from one another. Whatever those limitations are, none of them keep us from praying. None of, us keep, none of them keep us from searching. And none of them keep us from serving one another. Maybe we have to find new 
and creative ways to do it. But indeed, it is in that service that we remain true to ourselves. We remain true to our calling. We do find that for which we search. We find Jesus. And so, in this season of Epiphany, when we are urged to look for manifestations of God everywhere, to search for the image of Christ in one another, and to fulfill our promise to serve, that is our high calling. That is what God is calling you and me to do this day. And it is then that we will find the one for which we search. Truly, without the help of a Google machine, we will find God. Having heard the word of God and meditated upon it, let us now profess our faith. For we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, you have given yourself to us in your word. And so now we respond to you in prayer. God of the universe, you sit above the circle of the earth, and so we pray for oceans and mountains, inland waters and the air we breathe. Save and protect them, we pray. Since the beginning of our faith, we have looked to you to gather the outcast, heal the brokenhearted, and to bind up their wounds. So we pray for the poor of the world. We pray for the sick and the lonely. We remember especially Joan, Barbara, Zena, Catherine, Rosemary, Bud, Pat, Chip, and Joey. Remember now those in the silence of your hearts. Loving God, you build up Jerusalem, the holy city, so we pray for our own nation, for all the countries of the world, and for all the leaders of governments and society. May we all come to see that your delight is not in the strength of military might, but in those who hope in your steadfast love. How good it is to sing praises to you, O God. And so now we pray for your church here and around the world. Empower us to go from town to town, proclaiming the good tidings, the message of Christ. We remember today especially the Anglican Church of Burundi, Trinity, 
Athens, the Diocese of Kadokeji, and St. Luke Bajor Parish. And we lift up from among our own community, Scott, Brianna, William, and Anna Tilly, David, Deborah, and Jocelyn, Susan, and Marion. And so, everlasting God, creator of the ends of the earth, together we bless you, for truly you are gracious to us and to all. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we give all glory and honor to you, now and forever. Amen. And so, my friends, though we have failed and missed the mark in serving our God, let us now turn to him in confidence and confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And so may Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you unto eternal life. Amen. And so, my friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you always.
all things come of thee, O God, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the very face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your holy people, in your word spoken to the prophets, but above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. Now on the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your own creation these simple gifts of bread and wine. And we pray, O most gracious God, now to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be for us the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be made acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Luke, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. All through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Father Almighty, now and forever. Amen. And so now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, then forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! For these are the gifts of God, and they are given for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. So now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your minds and hearts ever in the knowledge and love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And may the full and most abundant blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you now and remain among you always. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ to love and to serve the Lord.